Yes. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the edge between it is not really that clear. So, just as a previous version, just at some point we say, okay, now we're going to stop and we go to uh, make request five version. And then, um, a lot of the functionality we put already in quest four because uh, one of the advantages, for example, for putting shadows in version four is that a lot of customers can mess around with it, report bugs, stuff like that. So if we want to use the same functionality in our new product, we already have like a long period of testing. So um, there, there's not really uh, any ID right now with what we're going to include in five. But there's a big chance that the landscape painting, for example, and all the, the old shaker system will be in, in five, I guess. Yeah. It, it's so big, it's, it's really a new addition to a new question. <laughs> It will be uh, quite a big change because it's a complete uh, different approach to previous question versions. Because previous question versions were basically just calls to DirectX. Now what we do is we build a whole 3D engine in between so, to solve all these difficult issues with shading and shadows and stuff like that. Yes? To build a, such kind of train, it's possible to do giving some data. Yes, of course, my uh, here look. It's a lot easier to implement, implement something like Undo because in Quest 3D you have unlimited amount of options with channeling and uh, filling in values and even writing your own code. So it's difficult there to make Undo. But it's, uh, it's always very wanted feature in, uh, in the Quest 3D. But our, our main philosophy is uh, what we see with some applications is if, if you think really smart about how you create the application, you don't even need them. So some, some applications, they, uh, they just make it very easy to undo your actions. So you don't have an undo option that you can just, uh, just correct your errors very easily. Which is not the case with the deleting or something like that. But that's typically where our undo comes in. Yes. Okay, yeah, 
Uh, but the, uh, all I can say is there are no, no plans like that. It's, for now it's just uh, making sure that uh, all this cool technology like uh, you know, the, the shadow rendering or whatever gets accessible for, for normal people instead of only people who know who've read like the stack big of uh, books and stuff like that. Mm. Any more questions? Uh, yes, the thing. Well, basically, uh, it makes sense to have some form of interaction, but uh, I cannot say anything more about it. But, of course, obviously, in the in the application itself, there's a lot of interaction, but for the final results, um, I cannot say anything about it because it's uh, still a work in progress and uh, part of uh, the concept we're working on. So. How much is Speed Three license? How much? Yeah. It depends a little bit on uh, how you want it, but I think it's about ten thousand or something. Ten thousand dollars. But if you make a game or something, then uh, ten thousand dollars is not so much. But uh, I, I guess for a lot of people, it's uh, too expensive. But the cool thing is that if you make something with this new application, we arrange that you don't need the license. So it's only for Quest for the EU license. What they do is they view uh, everything that comes out of this application as like a, a similar license as a game model modification. So that's why you don't have to pay extra. Yes? And were there any additions to the editor that uh, you can edit those more easier or expose uh, those from, from clients to, to the editor? Uh, which one? What do you mean exactly? Now, right now, yeah, and you, uh, if you're using your old system, you, you have to build your. Uh, you don't have access to, to, to your classes. Yes. So you can't see that first. You, 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 you can call a channel dialog and look at them, but uh, they're not exposed to the editor. Yes. Um, oh. We plan to, yeah. to, to enhance um, the, the editor experience. But right oh, now, yeah. you're saying it's going to edit a framework, which is good. But uh, the work in the editor, I feel like it's not competent, but working very good with the old system. Yes, you mean uh, you want slider or something for the, for the instances? Well, this works is at least how we solve it. That probably, uh, I can imagine something will be there for Presidy at some point. So that in this framework we have, we have created this whole interface system. So there's not a problem like that. that it's automatically solved in the interface system. So, uh, we still have to look. Maybe maybe parts of this can maybe uh, available for press release. So you can also use the same really nice method for editing instances. But for now, we don't have any ideas about uh, improving that or something like that. So, any suggestions are welcome, of course. Any more? Yes. Well, in the past, we, we, we 
converted to the DirectX versions before. Uh, right now, it looks there's not a big reason to change, basically. But if there's a big reason, of course, then you move over. But if you look at all the applications right now in DX9, they run better even, or uh, same performance as uh, DX11. And, uh, everybody can run it, so even with people with Windows XP, which is a big benefit. A bit of a trade-off. If, if you move right now to the DirectX 11, you get a bit of uh, just a few nice extra features. But if you look at the end result, most people won't really notice. And, and the penalty for moving to a platform that nobody has basically is, is quite high. Uh, I haven't heard next to last question, but I wonder if uh, it wasn't about 64-bit version and multi-threading, Unity and new. Unreal Engine uh, Safari